The 6.5 is on the road here in San Jose. We're at NVIDIA GTC 2025. And as you can imagine, this show is buzzing. And unsurprisingly, we are talking nonstop about pretty much what we've talked about the last two years, which is AI. And AI is big, right? And we saw most of the action starting off the hyperscalers. The next wave, natural wave of that is enabling enterprises. And to do that, right, they need the right compute, server, storage, networking, everything to work as a cohesive system and do it in an easier way because quite frankly, they don't have the resources, they don't have the skills that all of the hyperscalers have. Uh, to talk a little bit about this, I am really excited to introduce Kevin from Cisco. Yeah, thanks for having me, appreciate yeah, it. First time on the show, I know you and I have talked a lot. Yep. Uh, before that, I like to say, hey, we have a Zoom relationship, but saw you at MWC uh, in real life. Gosh, I have seen more Cisco AI conversation probably in the past six months than I saw in the previous 10 years. Not that Cisco wasn't doing AI, but you're just doing a lot more of that uh, in, in, in different areas. So, I'm gonna hit you with the first question. We're here at the big show this week. What, what are you hearing? What have your conversations uh, been focused on here? Yeah, and if you think about it, we, we were here last year as well, and a lot of last year was just about the desire for, for companies to try trial things out or, or get involved in AI or just talk about AI in some way without a real understanding of usefulness, ROI, and how they were going to drive things. And, and what I'm excited about is a lot of the solutions that, that we've announced this week and a lot of the solutions I see around the floor are around what people are actually doing with it and actually yes. real applications that people can monetize and, and you know, drive not only investment, but, but real ROI from. Yeah, I mean, enterprises, understandably, it started off with experiments, yep. right? They had a, a top list of things they wanted to try, uh, deployed some POCs, and then, you know, for, for some of those, uh, they're trying to scale those to deliver real value. Because in the end, and sometimes, uh, particularly the tech press or, you know, just, just people looking at AI, they, they fall in love with the tech. But in the end, you got to drive revenue, you got to reduce costs or increase stickiness with your customers that hopefully increases revenue long term. So, um, what are you seeing? I mean, AI wasn't invented two years ago, right? but in this new generative AI, agentic AI, what are some of the biggest challenges uh, that your customers are experiencing? Well, so, so we've actually been involved in the, the AI wave, in that early wave with hyperscalers for a while now. We sell silicon, we sell systems that help build out that AI backend, but what we're starting to see is exactly what you described. It's you know, most of our enterprise customers are not going to go and build their own large language models. And what we've yeah. seen over the last uh, few months, even with the deep seek phenomenon, is the cost of, of leveraging these models, the cost of inference, and the ability to drive ROI is actually increasing at a rapid pace. And so now we're moving from, you know, how do I trial, prototype, and, and play around with this stuff to, okay, if I'm going to drive maturity and large scale AI applications in my network, what does that infrastructure look like and how can I evolve what I have to now start to run some of these uh, AI workloads? Yeah, and part of part of this simplicity play, making things a little bit easier, uh, are partnerships. Yeah. I mean, the reason why there's so many people in this hall right now is nobody can go at this alone. It really does take a village here. I'm curious, uh, you made some big announcements uh, with NVIDIA, um, gosh, was it a week ago, two weeks ago? Yep. Uh, here we are at GTC, you made some more announcements. Can you walk us through maybe what you had announced previously yep. and then what you announced this week? Yeah, definitely. Let me, let me take you back about a year. So we were here at GTC last year and yeah. what we announced last year was a deepening of an engineering relationship with, with NVIDIA. You know, we, we have always resold their GPUs and we've launched some new AI servers that can kind of bring in more GPUs and NVLink Connect and everything we need to go yeah. and run some of these AI workloads. But uh, right before the NVIDIA earnings announcement a couple weeks ago, what we announced was a broadening of that partnership where we were going to start to share technology between the companies. And so if you think about it, our ability to do networking, and not only networking, but controllers and telemetry and orchestration and all the things that have to sit around 
that AI ecosystem yeah. as enterprises are going to deploy the technology was, was really critical for, for both us and NVIDIA. And then our ability to take our partner and channel ecosystem and you know, take those solutions and push them down deep into the enterprise was also really valuable. And so yeah. that, that sharing of technology means I can now take my silicon, my Nexus switches that, that we build for traditional workloads and high-end enterprise, and I can put those into the Spectrum X end-to-end -end platform or architecture. Yes. So now a customer that's deploying Nexus, they use our, our operations and management tools, they use our controller, Nexus dashboard, they can deploy the Spectrum X architecture, the NVIDIA enterprise reference architectures or uh, NCP architectures, but with our technologies. And so that's been a big, big step. Right. And you know, for our audience, can you help them understand what part of the network? So we've got the front end network, yeah. we've got the back end network, and the scale up network that connects GPUs. I, I know you're not part of that, but can you talk about the other elements yep. specifically that you're helping with? Yeah, definitely, and so, so even in the scale up part, so we now have a, an eight GPU server that's NVLink connected in it, so right. the NVL8 architecture that, that Jensen talked about. So that's how we build our base uh, building block for, for GPU-based compute. And then when you want to sort of scale out and connect these, we build high scale ethernet networks, ethernet fabrics, that are based on our forwarding technology, our operating system, and our controller. So if a customer has a front-end network that's based on Cisco today, and they're deploying Cisco Nexus, they can actually build up a back-end, connect all their GPUs together with the same switching technology, the same operations, the same management. So as you think about enterprise consumption, they want an easier route to market, and they want to be able to leverage as much of the operational knowledge and understanding they have. And so the ability to take the same tools they're deploying today, but deploy them in a real system-based approach, which is what you need when you're deploying GPUs, is something that we don't have in the market today. And and was the big challenge, or the, you know, before the two of you came together, the value prop, that, you know, enterprises, uh, the smaller CSPs was essentially <laughs> operating two different networks. Exactly. Okay. And not even just two different networks, but they were two different networks based on different technologies with different operations and management. So a lot of times you'd have to train up an entirely new staff on yeah. how to manage that, that backend network. And the funny thing about backend is it's all the same components. You've got network and storage and compute and all the stuff you talked about before, but they have to operate as a single entity or a single system. And it's not the same thing as just building out a network and attaching compute. We've been doing things with something we call Hyperfabric, where we're running Cisco agents on the NVIDIA SmartNICs okay. and using those to actually connect all these uh, compute devices together more efficiently, guarantee performance, and understand latency and connectivity between devices. Yeah. So it's a lot more than just an OEM selling their equipment. We're building real engineered solutions together. So you've made huge investments as a company uh, on the data side and obviously on the security side. Yeah. How does that play into this com combined Cisco NVIDIA solution? Yeah, no, it's a perfect question because you can definitely take the NVIDIA enterprise reference architecture, which is what we've done, and you can build out and scale out, and, and, and there's plenty of OEM partners that, that are doing that. One of the big gaps that we saw in enterprise deployments was this idea of securing that AI infrastructure. And you know, they have a security paradigm in their front end and in their traditional network, yeah. but as they brought in AI workloads, how do we actually tie security in? And so we've added, there'll be more over time, but we've added two major components to that. One being something we call AI defense. AI defense is a new set of technology we launched in January. And think of that as the, the tool that can protect the LLM and also protect the LLM from the outside world. And so we can do things like understand what the guardrails are and continually do things like pen tests to make sure that we can't jailbreak the LLM and, and misuse it in any way. Right. Um, and then we can also give IT professionals visibility into what AI applications are being run in their network infrastructure. Are they using cloud APIs? Are they potentially leaking data and leaking information right. outside that are then being used to train these models, uh, which is what a lot of enterprises don't want to see. Uh, and most of them just lack visibility into the, the rogue AI applications that are being used inside yeah. of, of IT. So, Cisco is a company that uh, rarely makes an announcement and then doesn't deliver for like one or two years. So, uh, you make announcements that are closer to when you can yeah. actually deliver that. So, you've had a lot of conversations with your customers uh, and your channel partners. I'm curious, what's the read? What's their feedback uh, been on this? Yeah, pe people want access to these technologies immediately. The good news is we have been working on these for a while. Um, that engineering partnership that we announced a year ago was when we started developing a lot of this stuff. And so okay. what you're seeing is now very, very real. 
Um, the AI work, or sorry, the, uh, the software work that we have to do on the switches and the networking that we build today to integrate in with Spectrum X, it's software work that's happening on those devices now. So the hardware we're already shipping is capable of it and we're working with NVIDIA on software update on our side and their side that'll enable these to work together. Think of that as coming you know, in, the, in the summer time frame uh, and we're showing it to customers now. We're actually doing demos of some of the stuff here. Uh, and then we also announced that we'll be taking some of the Spectrum hardware and building Nexus-based switches based on that. So uh, if there's value in a feature or a functionality that sits inside Spectrum, we can bring that into the architecture for the back end, but still have that same operations and management sitting on top, giving that customer the easy button to go and deploy AI workloads without having to relearn new technologies and, and new operational paradigms. Yeah, so I, I kind of want you to tie a bow on the net benefits of the relationship. I know we've been kind of sprinkling them uh, throughout the conversation, but you know, lay it out. I'm, I'm a core value prop guy. Yeah. I'm, ex, I'm a recovering product guy. Yeah. So the core value prop uh, to your customers is is what of this alliance? Yeah, well, good. We're all we're all recovering product guys, and I love I, I don't love know, the you're, idea. You're still a product guy, so yeah. no, I love doing this stuff. So you yeah. Think about it in two ways. One is value to our customers is they get simpler, easier to use architectures that they can go and deploy, that have consistency with what they're deploying today. They now have silicon choice, so when we think about all the craziness in supply chain and having diverse supply chains, they can deploy Cisco silicon and, and the Nexus platform or the, the Spectrum silicon when we build that switch and, and do it in a way that they get consistent features, functionality, and capabilities. And then they can deploy the, the Cisco technologies they've been deploying on the front end and operate and manage it simpler. So that's the, the customer value. But in terms of the NVIDIA and Cisco value, Cisco has, has made a business out of our ability to connect with the channel, partner, and yes. end customer ecosystem. Yes. NVIDIA is a phenomenal engineering company, but they're really built around how do I build amazing products, hardware, but really software. Now, if you saw Jensen's keynote, he talked a ton about the CUDA libraries and all the different things that they've built. Right. We now have the ability to take that, take our channel and partner ecosystem and, and really amplify that and push that out to this new end customer yeah. base, which is service providers and enterprises. Yeah, so I want to wrap this conversation talking a little bit about the future, not yeah. asking you your future roadmap, but you can spill if you'd like. <laughs> uh, but no, more directionally, what should we expect uh, with either this you know, relationship between the two companies or in general, Cisco AI? Yeah, well, first of all, the, the uh, agreement that we signed is a multi-year engineering agreement. So it's not just the set of products we're launching now. Yeah. It's a it's an agreement that will continue to evolve and develop with the 100 terabit silicon that's coming and 200 terabit silicon. And so you'll see a, a more natural evolution of our engineering products yeah. coming together, congestion management, all the things that are problematic in an AI network, we'll work on and work on solutions together. But I actually really like how Jensen calls out the the kind of evolution of AI, and you know, we've, we started with the generative AI stuff we're, we're in the middle of now, right. we've got this move to agentic AI, which is going to change the way we think about how these networks have to work, yeah. and then we've got this thing that's probably a few years out, but, but with physical AI, where AI is going to step outside of the boundaries of the data center, and once it does that, networking and security and the ability to build solutions that can be easily deployed are even more critical, and that's something that Cisco does really well, so I think we're super excited about the partnership and the stuff we launched now, and we're really looking forward at, at how can we continue to evolve this and just build great solutions that help our customers adopt AI technology. Yeah, I'm super excited about uh, the potential opportunity in the edge. Yeah. And by the way, years ago we called it Industry 4.0, yeah. the Industrial IoT, and I've thought a lot about, well, why is it going to work this time? Yep. And I fundamentally believe that we had all this data out there but we didn't have the capability to do as much with it. Exactly. Quite frankly, we had to ship too much of it in, in one direction, up, uh, to get something done, as opposed to, let's say, shorter hops uh, out there on the edge. Uh, and I also think we lack the common tool sets uh, to make this work. And through history, distribution to the edge only works if you can manage it. Yep. And even the improvements in the tools. Yep. Uh, have become, important. so I'm an optimist about the edge. It sounds like Cisco is and you are too, and you're putting investments, uh, not only you know, organically, but also with your partners to make that happen. 100%. Well, it sounds good. So, Kevin, this is great. Um, it seems like every few months you are adding you know, to, to, to the announcements and 
actually getting a lot of work done uh, at the same time. So hopefully we can check in and, and see how things are going. Anytime. I love doing these and uh, just reach out and I'm happy to do this. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate right. that. Thank you. This is uh, Patrick Warhead in the Cisco booth at GTC 2025. We are talking about simplifying AI for the enterprise. Listen, hyperscalers uh, are one thing, enterprise and smaller CSPs, it's a totally different piece. You have to have uh, the infrastructure in place. Sure, we're talking about a GPUs, a little bit CPU compute, a little bit of storage, but networking is critical to figure it out. And oh, by the way, you need to secure that entire data estate. And every time that data moves anywhere, any hop out there, you need to be instrumented to make sure that you're reducing that threat. So hit that subscribe button, check out all the Cisco content here on the 6.5 and also on GTC. We've had some incredible conversations here. Take care, hit that subscribe button.